year is 1993. Fresh off its splash into arcades, Street Fighter 2 is dominating the Super Nintendo. The fighting game genre is just beginning to enter its golden age, and every game company out there is trying to get a piece of the pie. They're all putting their own spin on the foundation laid by Capcom's darling, and some games had awesome, yet terrible, box art. That's why today I wanted to look at the hat that Jalico threw into the ring. Tough enough for the Super Nintendo. Tough Enough was produced by Jalico and released for the SNES in 1993. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighter, as was all the rage at the time. It takes place in the year 2151. After an enormous war has decimated the Earth, a man named Jade has erected a giant tower as a display of strength, and no one who has left to challenge him has ever returned. Four fighters have a tournament to decide amongst themselves who is strong enough to challenge Jade and end his tyranny once and for all. The main cast consists of four characters, Sio and Zazi, your typical Ryu and Ken characters, as well as Ninja Girl Kotono and Dutch wrestler Vortz. After winning their tournament, you can challenge Jade's lackeys. Beans, who fights with an American sack, whatever that is. Dolph, who seems very overprepared for a fist fight. Ray, a young Japanese girl with iron shoes. Gadget, who's basically just Vortz with a different head. The Mass Ninja Siro, Iron Man Kays, and finally, Jade himself. You can only select the main four in any mode, even two-player verses, but luckily there's a code to allow you to play as the bosses. On the mode select, press left three times, right three times, left seven times, then start and you'll hear an explosion. Now you can play as the bosses in versus CPU. Reset the game, then press right three times, left three times, right seven times, then start. You'll hear another explosion, and then you can play as the bosses in two-player mode. The first time you play Toughy Enough, you're probably going to think it's just a slow, crappy Street Fighter clone, but you're only going to be half right. If you're expecting to play like Street Fighter with lots of flashy special moves and combos, you're going to be disappointed. And while the game isn't necessarily slow, the pacing is very deliberate, and that's because it has a very large focus on priority moves. What priority means is which move will actually connect when two attacks collide, and it's a big part of fighting games. Some standing moves will connect while a jump kick flies through them, for example. As the pace of the game is slower than others from around the same time, it's also a good way to begin learning about other technical aspects of fighting games like frame data. Even if you don't care about any of that kind of stuff, Tough Enough is still a lot of fun to play. The cast is colorful and very mid-90s and fun to experiment with. The game's graphics look good despite some jerky animation, and the music is incredible. If you ask me, it's one of the most underrated soundtracks on the SNES. Some cool features that Tough Enough throws into the mix are a password system, allowing you to resume story mode if you get pulled away, and special moves that power up as you progress. Kotono's rising spiral kick doesn't look like much at the beginning, but once you reach the top of the tower, she's surrounded by a flaming dragon whenever she performs it. It adds a sense of your character growing stronger, which is uncommon in fighting games. Now, Tough Enough came out in 1993, back when Japanese developed games often underwent a lot of changes in their journey to the West, which more often than not meant censorship. Tough Enough is no exception, so that's why I also wanted to look at its Super Famicom counterpart, Dead Dance. The game is pretty much the same, save for some cosmetic changes. The game takes place in the year 2000X rather than 2151, so now it's more of a historical documentary. Whenever a fighter's health drops below half, their faces get bloodied up, which was probably removed from the US version due to Nintendo's pretty strict content guidelines at the time. There's pre- and post-match dialogue that was completely removed from the US version. Also, Jade's name is Jado. Not sure why they changed it, Jado sounds much more masculine than Jade. In the US version, defeating Jade treats you to a lame congratulatory screen. Defeating him on normal difficulty or higher in Dead Dance gives you a full ending cutscene specific to the character you beat him with. I'm not really sure why they didn't translate any of this, because there's really not a lot of text to wrestle with. So you're probably thinking, well Joe, that's all well and good, but how do I play a Super Famicom game on my American Super Nintendo? Well, viewer I've never met, I'm glad you asked. This was long before developers used software tricks and lots of chips and things like that in order to keep people from playing import games on their domestic console. 
The only thing keeping you from playing a Super Famicom game on your Super Nintendo are two plastic tabs in the cartridge slot. Inside the Super Nintendo cartridge slot are two plastic tabs. American games have slots to get around this, while the Japanese versions do not. All you need to do is just remove the two tabs with a knife or pliers or something and you're good to go. Just make sure that you're not actually going to stick any metal in the cartridge slot when you're doing this. It's pretty easy to get a copy of Tough Enough. At the time of this filming, the cartridge alone goes for about $5 to $10 on eBay, with box copies a little harder to find and hovering around the $20 mark. And really, if you're buying this game, you want the box. The Dead Dance price sits at about $12 to $15 with not a lot of distinction between box and loose copies. I got mine for about $17, which included shipping. It's completely up to you which version to go for, but I personally never grew out of thinking it was awesome to own the Japanese version of a video game. Tough Enough, or Dead Dance, might not be the most memorable fighting game from the era, but it's definitely still a lot of fun to play. Whichever version you wind up with, popping the game in and having some friends over is a surefire way to relive the days of passing the controller back and forth, slinging trash talk, and arguing over who has next. With today's games being mostly online-only affairs, I think we all need a little bit of the old days back in our lives. Well, that's all for this episode. In order to keep up with what's going on with the backlog, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, check out our website, and like us on Facebook. If you want to know what I'm up to personally, you can check me out on Twitter as well. Ha <laughs>